Hi friend, welcome back. Today's day two of our chakra challenge and today is all about the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra is located about two inches below your belly button around the center of the bowl of the pelvis. This energy center is associated with feelings and emotion, passion and desire, as well as creativity and um, pleasure as well. So today's class is gonna be focused on feeling. We're gonna really feel into all of the different yoga poses that we do today. And I want you to know that you have freedom of exploration within the poses. There's no doing a pose perfectly today. I really just want you to slow down, explore the pose and feel. I'll explain more about that as we go. If you have yoga blocks, I recommend you grab them for this class. But if not, no worries, you don't absolutely need them. So with that, let's get started and we're gonna begin on our backs. So go ahead and lay down, knees bent, feet flat on the floor, and your arms just down at your side or resting on your belly, whichever you prefer. And we're gonna do some gentle pelvic tilts. So on your inhale, go ahead and lift your belly button and lower back slightly, slightly arching the back. And then as you exhale, scoop the tailbone under as you press the low back long down on the ground. As you inhale, lift the low back up, pointing the tailbone down towards the floor. And then exhale, scoop the tailbone under, lift it towards the ceiling slightly. As you pull the navel in, low back goes long. Let's keep going back and forth, inhale, kind of an arch in your spine, and then exhale to round the spine, kind of like you were doing cat-cow on your back. Every time you inhale, the low back lifts so that there's space, and then every time you exhale, really glue the low back all the way down onto the floor. Take a few more rounds of this at your own pace. And then start to decrease the range of motion. So imagine that you're like a rocking chair that someone just got out of and it rocks a few times, but the movement becomes smaller and smaller and smaller as you start to find the center of your sacrum, which is the bone that lies within your two hip bones. And then let's take your feet as wide as your mat once you find stillness arms out at your sides, and we're just gonna take some slow, easy windshield wiper knees. So you're bringing the knees one direction and then the other, moving as far or as shallow into this pose as you like. Just swaying the knees from side to side. Let this feel really good. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Breathing as you sway the knees. We're here for just one more breath. And then make your way back to center with your knees. Once you bring your knees back to center, you can bring the knees into the chest and you can rock and roll up to seated or you can just roll off to one side and come up into tabletop. Our next pose is downward facing dog. So spread the fingers wide, tuck the toes under, lift the hips high to the sky. Now I want you to explore this downward facing dog. You may be used to just holding or just pedaling out the feet. But for this downward facing dog, I just want you to be able to maybe sway the hips from side to side. Experiment with swaying the hips to the left, swaying the hips to the right, feeling the lengthening between your hip and your armpit as you sway. Maybe you wanna pedal the feet, working into each individual leg, Maybe when you do a little combination of both. Just allow yourself to feel into this down dog. 
There's not any perfect way to do it. Just allow your hips to move, your knees to bend, your feet to shift. You can even play with taking the feet wide as you, if you like. See how that feels. And then when you feel complete, you can bring the knees down to the mat to come back to tabletop position. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the left leg through in between the hands. And this is the point where if you wanna grab your blocks, I recommend it if you have them, place the blocks on either side of your left foot. Now we're gonna drop into this low lunge, but we're gonna do it a little different than you might be used to. So I want you to take that pelvic tilt from the beginning of class and incorporate it here. So think about your tailbone in space. And then as you inhale, I want you to slightly lift the tailbone. It's gonna be a really subtle movement. And then as you exhale, scoop the tailbone under slightly. Again, really subtle. Inhale, lift the tailbone, tilt the hips forward. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, tilt the hips back. Let's do three more of these. So it's a really small movement. Don't feel like it has to be huge. We're just exploring some pelvic movement here. One more. Good. And then if you like, you can set the blocks off to the side or you might wanna continue to use them as we heel toe the left foot to the outer left side of the mat, dropping down into your lizard pose. So let the hips come down, coming down onto hands or maybe bringing your hands onto blocks if you have them. I like them on the lowest setting. Either way is fine. And then again, I want you to find movement here in this lizard pose. So maybe swaying the hips from side to side if it feels good. If it doesn't, feel free to just hold still. Just moving a little this way and that way. Maybe playing with this left knee, rolling onto the pinky toe side of the foot and then rolling back onto the bottom side of the foot. This is your pose, so I invite you to just get curious, explore and feel. Feel what feels good in your body and feel what maybe doesn't feel good in your body. And do the things that feel good and don't do the things that don't feel good. Now, if your back knee needs cushion at any point, feel free to uh, double up your mat or to place a blanket underneath that back knee if you're practicing on a hard surface. Let's take one or two more breaths here. And then we're gonna do an interesting transition. So move those blocks out of the way if you have them and heel toe that left foot back between the hands tuck the right toes under, lift the right knee up, and then we're gonna shimmy your toes towards the right. I'm gonna face away from you, but I'll spin around so you can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna sh turn the toes to the right, walking the hands to the right as well, bending that left knee, dropping the hips down, lifting the right toes to come into a deep side lunge or skandasana. So you might feel a big sensation through the right inner thigh, the right inner groin. And just take a moment to breathe into whatever sensation you're feeling. Nice deep breaths. There's not so much movement here in this pose, but just really feel into this sensation. Breathe into whatever you're feeling. Maybe if you like, you can even play with reaching the right arm up towards the ceiling. If it feels good, you're welcome to keep both hands down on the ground. And then on your next exhale, let's bring the hand back down and then walk the hands towards the top of your mat as you spin the feet forward, ending up in this runner's lunge with the left foot in front. Bring that right knee down and let's switch sides. So you're gonna bring that left foot back and now you're gonna bring the right foot in between the hands so that we can do the second side. If you used the blocks on the first side, feel free to grab them. If your hands are down on the ground, that's great as well. So find that low lunge, dropping the hips down towards the earth, 
finding length in the spine. And then let's bring back that pelvic tilt. So inhale, lift the tailbone slightly, and then exhale, scoop the tailbone under slightly. Inhale, gentle curve in the low back as you lift the tailbone. Exhale, lengthen the low back, lengthen the tailbone down. Couple more, so let's do three more rounds. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more, inhale, tailbone lifts. Exhale, tailbone scoops under. Beautiful. And then you can bring the hands down to the ground or onto blocks on the lowest setting as you heel toe that right foot to the outer right side of your mat. And then again, we're gonna move into that lizard pose, but lizard pose with movement. So with the right foot out wide, you can sway the hips from side to side, experimenting, getting curious. You can play with the right knee, moving it out and in, rolling onto the pinky toe side, and then back to the bottom of the foot if you like. Just getting curious, maybe finding that spot that feels like the best stretch. You're like, yep, that's it. That's where I wanna hang out then just stay there. Let's spend two more breaths here in this lizard pose. And then bringing that right knee in as you shift the blocks out of the way if you've got them. And we're gonna do that same interesting transition where you tuck the left toes under, lift the left knee, walk the hands around to the left as you turn the toes towards the left long side of your mat. Bending that right knee to drop the hips down, lifting the left toes towards the ceiling for skandasana on your second side. So notice whatever sensation you're feeling, just notice how this pose feels in your body. If it doesn't feel good for any reason, you're welcome to back out into more of a side lunge. And then if it does feel good, maybe experiment with lifting that left arm up towards the ceiling. Adding a little twist. Two more sweet, long breaths. Beautiful, and then let's exhale the hand back down, walking the feet around towards the short end of your mat as you flip those toes around, coming into that runner's lunge. Lower that left knee, let's reset into tabletop, and then we're gonna finish exactly the way we began. So come on back onto your back. We're gonna do those same two poses once more, the pelvic tilts and the windshield wipers. So feet flat on the floor, knees bent. Inhale, lift the low back, arching the spine slightly. Exhale, press the low back down. Now as you take these pelvic pulses or these pelvic tilts, I want you to notice how they may or may not feel different from when we did them at the beginning. Just observing, noticing, getting curious, how do they feel different? How do they not feel different? There's no right or wrong answer. There's just observation of what is in this moment. Notice what it feels like to move your hips in this way. Notice what it felt like to move freely within a yoga pose rather than to just hold it for five breaths or however long you're used to holding it. Good, let's slowly make our way to stillness, decreasing the range of those tilts as we come back. And then let's take the feet wide once more, arms out at your sides, big windshield wipers from side to side with the knees. Moving in a way that feels good. Just really feeling into whatever sensations are occurring within your body right now. Tuning in, noticing, practicing awareness. Good. 
beautiful. Let's make our way back to center. Take the knees wide, the knee or the feet wide, and the knees rest in against each other in constructive rest. And then just place your hands over where you think your sacral chakra right might be. So about two inches below your navel, rest your hands there. And let's take five gentle, slow, unrushed breaths to finish our practice. You're welcome to stay here as long as you like. You're also welcome to take Shavasana for a few moments, taking the legs long. And I'll leave you here saying thank you so much for practicing day two of our chakra challenge together. I can't wait to hear what you thought of this class, how it felt in the comments. Make sure you do your journaling practice for the day and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day three. Namaste, my friend.